Hi, I'm John Ainsley from Doulos. This is First Steps with UVM Part 2, the Design Under Test Interface. This is the second of a series of videos on which I'll help you get started with UVM by walking through some very simple but complete examples of UVM code. You can download and play with the source code yourself at the end of the video. In this particular video, we're going to look at the interface between the test bench and the Design Under Test, or DUT. Although this example is trivial, it still represents the way you'd actually write UVM code on a real project, so I can use it to explain the best way to do things. So here goes. We'll start with the DUT interface. In the previous Hello World example, the interface was empty. This time, we'll add a few pins, so we've got a clock, a reset, command and address and data buses. We're then going to need to access the content of our system Verilog interface from the class-based verification environment, which if you remember consists of the test and the verification environment proper. So the trick here is going to be to get access to the module-based system Verilog code, that is the instance of the system Verilog interface, from the class-based verification environment. Here we can see the source code of the system Verilog interface. You can see that we've simply added the variables representing the clock and the reset and the buses and so on. Then comes the design under test, which for the purposes of our trivial example is just a dummy implementation. So you can see we've got an interface port on the design under test, then it imports the contents of the standard UVM package, and then there's an always block that's sensitive to the positive edge of the clock, and it's using the standard reporting mechanism in UVM to print out a message whenever the DUT receives a transaction. Then comes the top level module. And just as for the previous Hello World example, in the top level module we're instantiating the interface, instantiating the design under test, and then we've got a procedure which calls run test. And if you remember, run test is going to instantiate the entire class-based UVM verification environment using the factory mechanism. And then run test will run through the standard UVM phases, starting with the build phase that will build all the UVM components, then the connect phase that will connect them together, and eventually the run phase, which corresponds to what you'd normally think of as simulation. So it's during the run phase that events happen and time passes. In a UVM verification environment, the component that wiggles the pins on the DUT interface is the UVM driver. And what we're going to have to do is to find a way of accessing the contents of that interface from our UVM driver, which if you remember is a class within our class-based verification environment. Well, the usual way to access the contents of a system Verilog interface in UVM is to use a virtual interface. A virtual interface is in effect a system Verilog variable that contains a reference to an actual interface. It's not technically a variable in system Verilog, it's technically a virtual interface. But in effect it's a variable and that's certainly how I always think of it. So in our class-based verification environment we don't want to directly refer to the system Verilog interface instance. That wouldn't be a very good idea even if the language would let us do it because that would mean actually hardwiring in a path to our system Verilog interface into the class-based verification environment. That's not very good for reuse. So what we're going to have is a so-called virtual interface within the class-based verification environment and then we'll set that virtual interface to refer to the actual interface instance in the structural module-based system Verilog code. In order to pass the virtual interface reference into the class-based verification environment we're going to make use of the UVM configuration database. The configuration database is one of the keys to reuse in UVM. The configuration database is in effect equivalent to parameters in Verilog or generics in VHDL. In other words, the configuration database gives you a way to parameterize the UVM component hierarchy. However, the configuration data database is a lot more flexible than the parameterization mechanism in Verilog or VHDL. For one thing, we can use wildcards when we're setting configuration parameters, as we'll see. 
Anyway, what's going to happen in this particular example is that our top level module, which has got access to the System Verilog interface, because the top level module actually contains the instance of the System Verilog interface, that module is going to place a reference to that System Verilog interface, a virtual interface, into the configuration database. And it's going to doing that, do that by calling the set method of the configuration database. Then the top level module will instantiate and run the whole class based verification environment by calling run test. So run test will create the test, then the env, then the driver in a top down fashion. And the class based verification environment can then get access to the configuration database. So the driver calls get and then sets the value of its own virtual interface reference. And the driver can then wiggle the pins of the DUT interface through that virtual interface. This might seem like a bit of a long-winded mechanism, but there's a couple of key reasons for doing it. Remember what we're trying to do here is to refer to the System Verilog interface instance from our class-based verification environment. Well, what we don't want to do is to put a hierarchical reference to the interface instance in the class-based verification environment. For one thing, the class-based verification environment is going to be typically written inside a System Verilog package, and the System Verilog language simply doesn't allow you to have hierarchical references within a package. But it wouldn't be a good idea anyway, because we really don't want to hardwire a path to a particular interface instance within our class-based UVM verification environment, because that would be really bad for reuse. Now we can start looking at the source code. So here's the top-level system Verilog module, the module that instantiates the interface and the design under test. Before this module calls run test, you can see it setting the virtual interface into the configuration database by calling the method set, which is a static method of class UVM config DB. So let's have a look at the details of the call to set. The configuration database essentially just stores name value pairs. So each parameter in the configuration database has a name and a value. And you can see the name and value arguments being labelled here. The very first labelled thing here, the thing labelled type, is the type of the value. So we can actually write values of any type into the configuration database. So each item in the configuration database, you can see, has a name, a value, that value is of a particular type. And each name value pair also has a scope associated with it. And the scope is set using the first two arguments, the caller and the path. So in general, the caller, the first argument to set, is a reference to the UVM component that's calling set. And the second argument, the path, in general, is a hierarchical reference to the particular component instance in the UVM component hierarchy. Well, in this particular case, we're not calling set from a component, we're calling set from the top level module. And that's why the first argument is null rather than a reference to a component. The second argument can be a full hierarchical path name, but one of the features of the configuration database is that we're allowed to have wildcards when we're setting configuration parameters. So in this particular case, this virtual interface is being applied to every component instance throughout the component hierarchy. Now we'll move on to our UVM driver component and have a look at the corresponding call to get. So let's just recap the standard structure of a component in UVM. Here we've got a user-defined class MyDriver that extends the base class UVM driver from the standard base class library. On the second line, we're registering MyDriver for factory automation. Then we're declaring our virtual interface, that is virtual.if.vi, that's the virtual interface variable. Then comes the standard boilerplate code for the constructor, the function new. Remember, every component in UVM is part of the component hierarchy, and the second argument to the constructor is a reference to the parent component. Then comes the standard phase method for the build phase. So the build phase function is called top-down fashion during the build phase. 
So the first thing that this build phase function does is to try to retrieve the virtual interface from the configuration database using the call to UVM config db get. So you can see the arguments to get are precisely the same as the arguments to set. That is the type of the value, the scope, which is defined with a caller and a path, and then the name value pair itself where the name here, .if, corresponds to the name that was used when the parameter was set into the configuration database from the top-level module. In this particular example, the scope is different to what we saw previously, but this is typical of the way that you would set the scope information when you're trying to retrieve information from the configuration database. So 99% of the time, you're going to want the caller to be this, in other words, the MyDriver component instance is retrieving configuration parameters that apply to itself. That's why the, the caller argument is set to this. This is always a reference to the current object. And similarly, the path is left empty because this particular component instance, again, wants to retrieve configuration parameters that, that apply to itself. If the caller and path arguments were set to anything else, what it would mean in effect is that this particular component instance would be trying to retrieve configuration information that applied to a different component, which would be perfectly legal, it's just not a typical thing that we'd want to do. So here our driver tries to grab the virtual interface from the configuration database, and the get call can actually succeed or fail. It's a function that returns a bit, value 0 or 1. So in this case, we're calling get within an if statement. We're saying if the get fails, if it returns 0, then we're using the standard UVM error reporting mechanism, in this case the macro UVM error, to write out an error message. And again, the benefit of using the standard reporting mechanism here is it's very easy to come along after the fact, intercept this error message and do something special with it, like maybe demote it to a warning or perhaps write it out to a separate file. So now we go back up to our top level module. Our system Verilog interface now contains a clock, so we're going to need a clock generator. And the right place to write a clock generator in System Verilog is within a module or an interface, never within the class-based verification environment. Of course, left to its own devices, this clock generator will just run forever, and we're going to need some way to end simulation. Well, the UVM verification environment is going to end under the control of the UVM end of test mechanism, that is by raising and dropping objections. So after the last objection is dropped, the UVM test will end and UVM will just effectively run off the end of all the UVM class-based code. And if we don't do anything else, then our clock generator is just going to run forever. Fortunately, UVM contains a mechanism to handle exactly this situation. What we can do is to set the finish on completion flag to 1. And that will have the effect of calling $finish at the end of the UVM test. Finish on completion is a member of the UVM top variable. UVM top is a variable built into UVM which contains a reference to what is in effect the top level component in the UVM component hierarchy. So UVM top is in effect the component which instantiates our top level UVM test. So we set UVM top finish on completion to be equal to 1. And then when the final objection gets dropped within the UVM simulation, UVM, instead of just running off the end, will call $finish. Now let's have a look at the run phase method of our driver component. So run phase is synchronized on the clock, and on each clock edge it wiggles the pins of the design under test. In this particular example, the driver is just setting command, address and data to random values. And finally, the test class. Well, the test class in this example is even simpler than the test class in the Hello World example. All it does in its run phase method is to raise an objection, run simulation for 80 time units, and then drop the objection again to indicate that the test is over. So when we run our test, we'll see the test running for 80 time units, that is eight clock cycles. In each clock cycle, the driver to the design under test wakes up and sets command address and data to some random value. 
And here you can see the UVM info messages printed out from the dummy implementation of the design under test. So that's it. You've seen a simple complete example in which a driver within a UVM verification environment wiggled the pins within the interface to the design under test through a virtual interface. Before we actually instantiated the class-based verification environment, we put a, a reference to that interface within the configuration database, and the driver was then able to retrieve that reference to the virtual interface during the build phase, before then wiggling pins during the run phase. You can now download the source code to accompany this video from the URL that you can see here in the middle of this slide. So at Doulos we deliver training classes in hardware design, embedded systems and ARM, ESL and hardware verification. If you want to know more details, do visit our website at www.doulos.com.